I believe the most beautiful part of being a minister is without doubt baptism. Nothing compares to welcoming a new life into the great family of God. On that day, parents, uh, godparents, uh, grandparents, family, friends are gathered to celebrate. The people of the congregation promise in the name of God's church that regardless of failures, wanderings, or mistakes, this person will always be welcome in our midst. And across the year, as you can guess, I accumulated uh, many funny anecdotes about baptism, like uh, a last-minute diaper emergency, a little boy who throwed his toy into the baptismal font, like splush, and a toddler <laughs> starting to run away from me. When I asked her if she was ready to be baptized, she screamed, No! and ran through the center aisle. Eh. Regardless of everything that can happen, it's always a beautiful day when I have the privilege to baptize someone. This morning we have heard the last few verses of the Gospel according to Matthew. Many see in this passage the climax of Jesus' proclamation. After his resurrection, Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene and the other Mary and said to them, Don't be afraid. Go and tell my brother to go to Galilee. There they will see me. So the disciple went back home where they, come, they came from as asked. And there Jesus appeared and he did not display represent his power. He did not share bread with them or invite his disciple to touch his body. No, no. He rather gave his final instruction to his disciple in what is called today the Great Commission. He said, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them uh, sorry, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have, have commanded you. In the Great Commission, we can find the basis of one of the church's more, most important practice, the sacrament of baptism of infant or, and adults in the name of the Triune God. Since the early church, new believers are welcome in the great family of God in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. By this gesture, individuals of every generation have accepted to belong, to be under the protection, to be claimed that no one less than God, Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. We have come to believe that our baptism is more than a simple rite of passage or a good excuse to, great, to throw a great party. No, it's a statement that announces a new existence as an individual under God's love. It's both a commitment and a gift that sustain us during our life. In short, our baptism is a sacrament that brings us closer to God. The word baptism comes from the Greek baptizo, which can be translated by immerse. And since its beginning, the Christian church responds to the Great Commission by immersing new believers in water or simply sprinkling a few drops on their foreheads. However, being immersed in the name of God can also be understood as an act of immersing someone in the person of God. And this is, not, this is done not necessarily by water, but with words and action. Jesus invites us to flood people with a new understanding of God's character revealed in the words and the deeds of all the saints that preceded us. New believers are invited to be immersed into God's very being and people to experience more deeply 
God's love, to become intimate with all that God is. God above us, God besides us, God within us. And contrary to the belief of some, one does not have to go through a long and structured program or to know all the details of the latest statement of faith to receive this great gift. Baptism is a testimony of beginning a new life. And for this reason, it should not be seen as a one-time event, but as an ongoing process. Nobody received through baptism a VIP pass for heaven, no. It's only the first step of a journey that is reinforced by the teaching of the stories of Jesus and all this disciple who followed him. And we teach those stories, especially to our children, not to indoctrinate them or make sure they will take our place in the church and the committee or the congregation, but to make sure they know about God's love for humanity and how to live in accordance to this great principle of God's realm. With those teachings, we hope they can grow in wisdom and mature into a deeper relationship with Jesus the Christ. Furthermore, this invitation to join the great family of God is not limited to a restricted group. Throughout the readings of the Gospel, we discover that Jesus encountered many men and women who believed that God belonged to their own little group, and they were the only one that were, that were safe. But with the Great Commission, such limitations are no longer valid or acceptable. In front of his disciples, Jesus said, He did not say, Make disciples who has the same value than us, or who speak exactly the same language as us, or uh, who... who believe like us. No, he said, make disciples of all nations. As Jesus' followers were invited to go into all nations of the world and to transmit the knowledge and interpretation of the kingdom of God. And based on this instruction, all disciples of Jesus the Christ are called to be involved with this universal mission. We are commissioned to go from the comfort of our homes to the ends of the earth, spreading the good news of God, to journey with our brothers and sisters in faith, and to be members of the same body. Of course, to be this kind of disciple demand a great deal of efforts and, and boldness. Fortunately, we have the assurance that we are not alone on this journey. Jesus ended his great commission with an amazing promise. He said, And remember, I am with you always to the end of the ages. And this is not the first time we are reminded of this important truth. At the beginning of the gospel, according to Matthew, we are told that Jesus' name is also Emmanuel, God with us. And later on, Jesus told his disciples, For two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. And at the end of this morning's story, Jesus' last word to his friend is that he will be present at his disciples' side every step of the journey, and this forever. When we ask ourselves for the reason we exist as a church, well, we can go back to the last words of Jesus in the Gospel according to Matthew, which can be summarized in four simple mandate. Go, make disciples, baptize, teach. The mission of the church should be as simple as this. This is why we expect we accept sorry we accept to spend our Sunday mornings together. Why we like to teach each other the stories of Jesus and why we like to baptize to immerse adults and children into God's love for all humankind. Thanks be to God and amen.